Hi, I'm Lynn. I work at the Red Deer Museum and Art Gallery and because we are um, all in isolation thanks to COVID, I thought this would be a wonderful opportunity to try and do something different and do some painting online and demonstrating. I've been teaching art um, for many years and this is a project that I've done with some adults and with some youth age 8 to 12 that I find is a really fun, fairly simple way of teaching watercolors. Quite often when we start off with watercolors, it, we get very intimidated with the process and the materials because it looks much more difficult, but I find once you understand a few things, it can be very playful and fun. So here's the project that's completed, and here's one that I have just started to draw out. It's a little bit different. It's an ammonite, which is like a shell, and it's a simple thing to get started because as you can see, it's just a circular um, line with some lines outside so nothing has to be perfect nothing has to be measured and then we can just get started so from here with the materials there's two kinds of watercolors that you can work with you can work with what we call the um, the cakes and I've got just a scrap piece of paper just to test out colors if I need to and I've also got the pre-mixed colors on a palette that come in tubes and I find the tubes, I like working with the tubes sometimes more because once you add the water and really mix it, you have a greater volume of paint and it's a little bit easier to control. So uh, some of the tools that you can work with, they can just be everyday things. Don't waste your money on really expensive things that you don't have to. A good palette is good. Uh, medium road watercolors are good and um, medium road brushes. So f you need uh, a flat brush and you need a round brush and it helps to get them in a few different sizes and once you have a few of those that's most of the tools that you need. So when we get started I've just chosen a few colors because I want to keep my painting a little bit more neutral. Quite often we don't want to paint with browns because we think browns are really dull and boring and we always gravitate to the bright colors but the browns are the colors that make the bright colors look brighter. So it's always nice to include some neutral colors into your color palette. And of course I've got um, ultramarine blue and uh, a dark purple which are the dark colors and a little bit of yellow and orange and you'll see that really these colors here are the palette that I've used for this. So I'm going to try and use the same color palette. Um, the key to making a painting look uh, harmonious is to repeat the colors often. So now when you're working with watercolors you use lots of water. So I have my paper taped down to this board which is easy to lift up and move around as you'll see. Um, you want to keep your water paper taped because when it dries, when you get lots of water on it, it gets really um, it buckles and you, it helps to keep it flat. So I like to paint with watercolors in two ways. My favorite is called wet on wet and there's wet on dry. And wet on dry is really, in, basically you have a dry piece of paper and you just take um, a color such as brown and you just start painting. But I prefer to paint wet on wet where you actually wet a whole surface and you're working with the paint wet paint on a very wet surface and you get a much more exciting blending and um, bleeding effects of the colors and I'm just demonstrating here I'm just adding a little bit you can also mix the colors right on it once it's wet on wet the colors will just mix themselves right into the wet area so you control the paint by where you put the water and I'm just gonna add a little bit of everything I'm just showing you how you can add all sorts of colors light colors dark colors and they will just blend on their own so you don't have to necessarily pre-mix the colors you can just let them run and blend on their own and it's nice to have a board like this because you can see when you pick it up and move it around, this is how you can control where the colors are. Now I've, I've controlled where the, the paint is going to go by controlling where I put the water. It seemed to stop and I only added water right up to this pencil line. So if I can control 
where I put the water in every sim single little shape, then I can control that where the paint is going to go. The paint is always attracted to the water and it will only move within the wet area. So that I find is the easiest way to start to control the paint. You can start to mix colors, mix a little bit of blue and purple, mix some browns, just have fun with it and keep sort of building and just let the colors flow. Now the nice thing about working with a transparent medium such as watercolors is it's very experimental and playful so you don't have to feel like you you are going to make anything um, perfect. You can just allow the colors to just happen and each of these areas will look a little bit different which is the fun of it. I find it's much more interesting to just allow things to happen. If I decide that I want an area to be white, um, I can't, I don't need the color white, I just leave the white of the paper. So down here, I, I didn't finish this area, so I'm gonna go back into here. And I'm going to just leave some areas in the middle, the white of the paper. And if I find that I have too much paint, like right here, is, this is what I call a puddle of paint, I can just dry my brush, or grab another brush that's dry, and I can just lift that color out and pick up that excess water. And that is another way that I can control the paint. So I'm just gonna blend this, add a little bit more water just so I have a soft edge. And that's how I can control the paint. So you can see here where the paint is dried, this is what we call a hard edge. And this edge here is what we call a soft edge. So you can create form in your painting by just deciding whether you want hard edges and soft edges. So I try and keep the hard edges right along the edges where the pencil line is and areas that I want to be uh, to blend, I can create more of a soft edge area. If I want to lift and lighten an area, like in this area here, I wanna bring some more white into it, I can just drop some water onto that spot with a dry brush, start to lift. So the dry brush and lifting is sort of your uh, eraser in painting and it can help you to just lighten some areas. Now you can see here how I'm treating every shape a little bit different just like I did here. So I went through it and I decided to treat each little area sort of like an abstract painting and this is what makes this process and this painting quite fun and experimental. Just because I painted on this shape already doesn't mean I can't go back and add another layer and darken it or change the color. So once again, you're not locked in to, to anything staying exactly as is and you're free to go back and change your mind and really play and experiment. I'm gonna add a little bit of yellow here just as another highlighting color. And now we'll go on to another one. So I, like I said, I like to always start off with each shape with a wet on wet uh, technique. And I'm gonna make sure that when I do wet on wet that the water that I'm using is always clean. With watercolor, you do have to change your water often and make sure that it's clean. Then I will, I'm gonna go back and I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna try and keep the darker colors on the outside because that creates more of a bit of a, a bit of a shadow. And notice how I'm painting right up and a little bit past my pencil line. With watercolors, you you can't really erase the pencil line, so the best thing is to try and hide it. Keep your pencil lines really light to begin with, and then just hide them under your paint. And that also is another way to sort of control and cover up those lines. And even if the odd pencil line does show through in the end of the painting, it kind of adds that interesting um, handmade look. So it still still works in, in the end. Okay, and I'm just gonna add some pure water here to drop, drop it around. I'm gonna pick up my board. 
Let's see what those colors do if I just move it around. You can see how I can control the paint a little bit. And notice how the paint does not go outside of this line. It's not going to run past this because this is dry and this is wet. So it sort of acts as a wall. And that's another way to help control the paint. Is if this was wet, the paint would want to run into that area. Now you'll see there's a little spot where I went outside of the line, just by accident, that happens all the time. The easiest way to fix it is just take some clean water and dab it out very gently with your rag and it's also lifting. So I lifted a little bit more into that area that I didn't want to, but I can go back with some other paint and paint over that. So it's pretty forgiving once you know what you can and can't do with the watercolors and how it's going to um, react. Here there was a puddle of paint and I just want to lift some of that excess out and that way then when I lift it again it doesn't go somewhere where I don't want it to. Okay so one more and I think you get the idea. I can keep going around and around and around just so I, till I finish the painting. I'm gonna work on this area here because sometimes when you work on one wet area beside another wet area, that's where you're gonna have a problem. It, it's best to keep going around in a circle so that when I come back here, this is dry and this is wet and I'm not gonna have any problems, but I just wanna show you some of the issues that can happen when you paint wet beside wet and how two areas can of paint can run and blend into each other in a way that you don't want that to happen. So just try and control the, uh, once again, where you place the color and what areas you get wet. The fun thing about doing this, uh, letting the paint mix on the canvas instead of trying to pre-mix it onto your palette is that you never really know what color you're going to come up with and it creates a much more experimental way of making colors. So here I created almost a gray and that was what I would like to call kind of a happy accident. You can always go back in and drop other colors as long as it's wet you can start to add a little bit of texture um, some extra marks and just see how that um, blends and creates. If you don't like it, you can always just paint over it. If you do like it, you can keep it. So once again, quite experimental. Okay, I'm just going to keep going. So on this spot, I'm always keeping a little bit of a white edge in between some of these because on the shell itself or the amylite there is a white um, membrane or wall in between it so it's kind of fun to keep that little bit of white area left and you can see some pencil lines but you can go back in and change that later. So now here where that white shape in between is skinny some of the color from here bled into that so if I didn't want that I could lift it out, but with a dry brush, I can just lightly lift it and get rid of that color. Or I can take a darker color and just paint over top. So once again, there's two options in how you can fix a potential problem. You lift it out while it's wet, or you just paint over with another color and that would help camouflage it. Okay, so you can see how you can keep going on and having fun and treating every little cell kind of like a little miniature abstract painting and as long as you're working with the same colors there's going to be a unity and a harmony because all these colors repeat everywhere else. Now down here I'm going to go back because I'm not really happy with the way this is looking because I really don't want these hard edges in here. So like I said before, once it dries a little bit, you can use your water as a way to lift. I'm going to take a dry brush here and just, oh it's too big, and just lift out 
those areas. Think of the water as a way to wash and to clean up an area or to lighten it. And I'm just drawing my brush and lifting. I'll wet it again to sort of soften that hard edge that I don't want there. And I'm always doing it in sort of a bit of a circular motion. You have to be quite gentle with the watercolor paper. You don't want to be too rough with it when it's wet because it can tear. So I'm always using sort of a gentle motion. Now that I've got that sort of cleaned up, I can always go back in. I'll do a all over water wash and add a little bit more color. Add another layer. Once an area is completely dry, it's a little bit harder to work back into it. So it's, I advise to sort of work in an area and finish that area before it dries because it's much, much easier to control what the paint is going to do and to add layers and colors. Okay. So already you can see how this area has changed quite a bit, but I don't have any hard edges because I don't want the hard edges. I want to keep the hard edges along the outer edges to help to define the shape and the form. And yeah, I kind of like the way that looks, so I'll leave that. And that might change a little bit more as it dries as well. So that gives you an idea of just a quick lesson of something that you can try at home on your own. If you do want some watercolor paper, I do advise that you get um, something with a good tooth. Uh, a 140 pound watercolor paper is um, much better, can hold a lot more water than a 90 pound. So I'd, I'd spend a little bit more money and get a better piece of uh, watercolor paper. Sketch lightly, experiment with some colors, repeat your colors, really do lots of wet on wet. And then as you work, and it's dry, then you can take the green tape off and you will find that you have a nice little white edge all the way around your painting. So that is it. Thank you very much and hopefully you can have fun with watercolors at home.